So to recap, what have we done so far? We had a model which listed our external and our internal profitability drivers. We then linked all of these drivers together and formed a process flow for our business from the time we procure our raw materials to the time we have a finished manufactured product and we send that to the client. We then determine the amount of working capital that we need in our business to keep things running on a year-to-year basis because oftentimes our clients would sit with revenue that is due to us. But as a converse, sometimes we won't pay our suppliers immediately. So the residual that's required is the amount of money that we need on a day-to-day business to keep things running. That's our working capital. We then looked at taxation And we saw that from a tax perspective and an accounting perspective, sometimes we treat cash flows differently, in particular with regards to interest and with capital expenditure. We then looked at how to model a debt sheet, and we saw that the interest that we incur is recorded for accounting and for tax purposes, but the interest that we actually pay, the cash flow, is not. So we're going to devote the remainder of this financial modeling class to looking at cash flow because this is the major determinant that banks will look for when they decide whether or not you have uh, optimal debt capacity to take the debt that you're applying for. So what we have here is a financial summary. It's taken what we previously looked at in our operations tab where we ran through all of the manufacturing processes of this mine, our mining, our processing, all our direct and indirect costs, our general and administrative costs, and we finally arrived at our cost summary and our revenue summary. So now we're going to take that a bit deeper to look at how these things interact with one another in a cash flow statement um, type of format. So again, we have our macroeconomic assumptions. Uh, These are our external profitability drivers. We have our sales, which translates into revenue. And then we have our internal profitability drivers, which are our fixed and uh, variable costs, which are things that we can control within the business. We then have our EBITDA, which is uh, operating profit. Now, for a cash flow model, we actually do record the amount that we spend on capital expenditure in the year that we spend it. So it's a lot more realistic picture of what's actually happening in the business. So that's called our project capital expenditure or CapEx for short. We also record our maintenance CapEx, which is uh, the amount of money that we spend to replace broken parts, et cetera, et cetera. And then we also model our changes in working capital and the cash value of the taxes that we actually pay. We then have our debt facilities, which can take the form of senior, mezzanine, and equity. In this case, we just modeled a senior debt. So what that means, senior debt is um, the debt that gets paid first in the ordinary course of business. So if a business makes a certain amount of money, and that money is not sufficient to pay all of the debtors, The people who will be front of the queue to get some money back will be the senior debtors and then followed by the mezzanine debtors which lie one step below on the pyramid and then your equity is third. They're the riskiest form of funding because they only receive money back after the senior and the mezzanine debt holders have been repaid in full. So for simplicity, I've just put a senior debt case here where the business has borrowed senior debt. The business has capitalized interest, so they're not going to pay any interest or capital in the first two years because this is a heavy construction project for this copper mine. But what they will do is they'll start servicing their interest and repaying their capital in the final three years. And then we have our cash flow after senior debt service. Bear in mind, again, uh, we didn't really model any mezzanine or equity being poured into this company just for simplicity's sake. So this is a very important number, the cash flow after senior debt service. What the business would then do is they'd have a a running cash balance, assuming that none of this money is paid out in the form of dividends. Um, They have an opening cash balance and the cash that's generated in the period, and then it would just accumulate because they're accumulating positive cash as they go along. 